meeting. Um, so here we go. So I'll start with the, um, the fire safety evacuation procedure recording protocol. The fire escapes can be found at both ends of the Hollis chamber. There's no fire alarm drill scheduled. On a Saturday, we allow all personnel to evacuate into the Hollis car park. The council members of the public and press make film, record, photo photograph for live and or subsequent broadcast this meeting only when the public and the press are not lawfully excluded. Any member of the public who attends meeting and objects to being filmed, recorded, photographed should advise the clerk in advance who is struck that they are not to be included in the filming, recording, and photographing. Does everyone agree with that? I was happy with that. Good, <laughs> right. Welcome, everybody. Um, public question time? <laughs> no. Nobody this time, um, during the winter months. Uh, apologies for absence. Have a procedure. We obviously came for this. Um, right, uh, declarations of interest and dispensations. So one, members to declare any interest which are not currently entered in the member's register of interests, <coughs> or he, she has not notified the monitoring officer of it, to receive written requests for dispensation for disclosable pecuniary interests, and three, to grant any request for dispensation as appropriate. Anybody? No. Mm. Okay, number four, to confirm the uh, previous minutes of the fire and synops, 18th of December. Okay. So, sign the date to the page. Yes, please. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's terrible in January, isn't it? Always to remember it's 24. Yeah. Know, but for them, yeah. I felt after the maternity, it was three years out. How did that date? Thank you. That's the next one. <laughs> right, so. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Yep. Item 5, approval of payments and signature of the monthly bank reconciliation. Yeah, apologies, I did it double sign, it should be separate. So if you sign the front page and then the last page, right. because it's actually two important. Is everybody alright with Yeah, uh, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, one's just a clarification really, it's not an issue with the actual money. Yeah. Um, we've awarded a thousand pound, a thousand pound grant to the community trust for the winter warm project. Yes. Which is great, but I don't recall that grant application. It was it was awarded last October and was never paid, and they chased it. Okay. When was it agreed? Last October. Okay. No, October. The year last October. The year last October. So before this council, in a. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's, it was at the closure of their accounts. I think the accountant got in touch. And so is, are, are we saying this is retrospective and it should have been paid in the previous yes. administration? So they're not applying for any money for this current no. No. winter warmer. No. It was a retrospective one. It was never paid. And then and and. So again, it's coming out of this year's. It's going to come out of this year's because it should have it should have been paid as, year, at the or? time. Right. Yes, it, it was. Let me get my figures right. It was it was approved in October 22. It should have been paid in October, November 22. But because there was a change of staff, it was never paid. And then it was never chased. And then Joe, they were closing down the year end. Joe got an email saying we've never had it and we've been through the records and it was never paid. So we never paid. Okay. That's what well, least we know. <laughs> Um, the second thing is there's a there's a lot of um, yes. transactions for Midsummer Norton Football Club yeah. for eight thousand pounds. There's quite a few of them. Yes, um, Joe and I. She's going to take. The, she said it's her fault, but we did it together. Um, we had a huge mess up. Everything from this has actually gone over two months. When we were in month eight, everything got entered into month nine. So we have to delete everything in month nine, and you can't just delete it. You have to. No, you can't You have to do a negative <coughs> balance. So she did some wrong, and I did some wrong. So apologies. Month nine. It's a bit of a mess. Is a mess, but it. But w what got paid was the correct payments, and oh. hopefully it will balance out over the year. So. And what was the payments? Midsummer Autumn Football Club, which is which, which is Midsummer Autumn Football Club, because you've got Welton Rovers Football Club. So it's not Rovers. 
So which football club is getting? They're, they're the, um, it's the people that, it's a point way they play, it's just the sort of small, city. white city. Something. About up, up yeah. in the last hill. I think that's the one. So Because they came to us for a grant a little while ago, and we decided to maybe help them out with their strips. Eight thousand pounds? No, 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 it wasn't much as that. No. no. So what's, what's the eight thousand pound figure then? Isn't that to do with the with the site? No, they that they don't. That was actually never paid. There's a positive and a negative for each one. There's three it's negatives five. and two positives. I'm just trying to stand. No, you're right. You're right because it, it, it is it is confusing and it does look it does look. It, it, it's, and it's all part of my fault because I might put extra on because I was doing the back and then I missed it, so I put extra. So are, are you saying what happened was sort of it, on paper it's shown as being paid and then shown as not being paid and then shown as being paid and then not being paid? Yes, because we have to sort of put a negative. Yeah. So uh, so just to clarify, so there was never a requirement to pay eight thousand pounds. Or there was a requirement to pay eight thousand pounds, and we paid it once. Or I don't think there was ever a requirement to pay eight thousand pounds. Is that right? It's not on. It's not on the payments for, for month nine. It may have been month eight. Oh. No, I don't recall no. ever needing to pay a football club no. eight thousand pounds. I think the whole. Just seems a lot of money to get to a football club. I think we the whole thing has been an administrative no. so error. I think it got put in the wrong code, and we had to. We do it, so it never actually went to Okay, them. but we're happy that we've never paid eight thousand yes. pounds to be some little football club. Yes, yeah, so month nine is a complete I'm going to be unprofessional. Huh. So can we, how but can it we is sign off if it's does it balance out yeah, It right. does balance because the bank reconciliation balances. So it's all it's all it does balance, but it is it's probably oh, yeah. it's a mess. Oh, I don't want it being a mess. I'm just trying to understand yeah. that we haven't paid football club no, eight thousand pounds. No, we haven't pounds. paid the eight thousand pounds. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So three negative, three positive, nothing. Yeah. yeah. It, it so it's three eight thousand going out, three eight going yeah. back on the other. Yeah. So yeah. So there isn't an actual payment out to the football club. Mm. <laughs> right. Okay. Didn't you have another question though? Didn't somebody else have a question about it? Well, I just, no, I, I just felt there were a lot, well, yeah. yeah. So Joe corrected, Joe corrected it and I corrected it and we got it. <laughs> okay. um, it, it. It is correct, the correct payments went out to the correct people. Okay. <laughs> so if, you, if you're happy... I have um, just a couple of questions, really. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to kind of bring them up again. Um, so... Uh, one of the things I wanted to double check, you know, what the situation is to do with um, publishing the accounts for payments. So I didn't realise until recently things like the draft budget weren't published on the website to the public weren't able to download. It's on the website now. Yeah, but it wasn't before. No, we it doesn't get the draft. Well, I have thought anything that's included in the agenda should be public as part of the agenda, so the public have access to both, unless it's labelled as confidential, and then they don't. They because if we couldn't discuss it in a public meeting, I think they the don't the draft budget it. because it's a working document, and people will come and say, "Oh, you put it in the grant at five pound on so and so," and then when you come to prove that you haven't, so you don't tend you don't tend to mm. publish the draft the draft because it is a working document, and it and it changed daily mm. until you approved it last week, and the public will say, "Oh, as I say, oh, you put five pound in, can I have the five pound?" No, it's not in your budget. What well, it's showing on your draft budget. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not 100 sure that, that that's the correct way to do it. But I don't think we've published it before. We, all, we always did, yeah. In fact, we made. Uh, I think there was a complaint last time that it wasn't easy enough to find on the website. So, but leaving that to the side, I wasn't sure what the deal is with um, uh, these reports. So again, I think because they're part of the agenda. The they should either be published alongside the agenda, or they should be labelled as confidential. No, the bank rec and the report from Realtors doesn't go on the right doesn't publish because there's obviously a lot of personal yeah. information in the monthly list that you also got on yeah. goes on the agenda under monthly under monthly payments right so that is on on the website but it's it, not under agendas it right. goes under monthly it's going okay. on the finance section so it might be easier if people just just because i quite often download the agendas from a website just that, together it might be easier for people and that's how it was set up so i've just done it how it was we can do it in any way any way like i'm just anyway, saying so it, once, once <coughs> we've got the new one it might be a bit easier to find it's really just a question um so yeah that that was that what else i was going to say 
Um, yeah, normally when we get the reconciliation, it doesn't have quite as many details on it, even for this committee. So a lot of the transfers were to individual members of staff, and I thought those should be more confidential than they are. I can't confidential that. I've never seen the actual direct transfers to staff before with numbers next to No, week. I was told by internal auditor to start introducing that. Oh. that okay, right, fair enough. So you need to see it, but I do. Right, okay, if, if you're happy with that, that's fine. Um, I was told by internal auditor to do that's, that report in the back. Okay, and then that's fine. I noticed in the first part it was obviously redacted to an extent, or not redacted, it said salaries and wages, but other parts were a lot of personal transfers. So if you're happy with that, that's absolutely fine. And I come, sorry, sorry I, on that point, I, I wouldn't have problem if you were going to blank out names on yeah. of payments directly when it, when it names a specific member of staff. I think. And say so that doesn't go on the website anymore. Oh, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that we're all responsible people. Um, but I, I'm just more comfortable <laughs> with documents not having names on. Yeah, yeah. Just, you can you can access. Especially when it's personal things like salaries and stuff like that. You know, documents can get mislaid I'm or. Sure, I'm sure, um, have a go at doing that yeah. because, it, because obviously it's a realtor, so I then have to do it as a PDF and okay. I'm still playing. Don't, don't create extra work, it's more no, just no, your own sort of security, I guess. Yeah. 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 But I'm just recommended to do that report so you can okay. see, so you see. But that. perhaps you could give it, and then maybe, you, I mean, I don't know, but I'm just thinking that perhaps you can give the staff a reference number instead mm -hmm. of a name on the system mm -hmm. so that it only yeah, takes out a reference point. number against mm -hmm. that person. Yeah, that's a good thing. It's yeah, good help. idea. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just aware of that, I mean, too much information, we have our own private laptops, they're only as secure as we don't lose them and stuff. The less we know sometimes, the better, the less we need to know. Um, so, and, and obviously we haven't seen that before, that's why I mentioned that, it wasn't, I wasn't no, was the thing. It, it was um, the last meeting. Was it? Well, sorry, it's one of the few many meetings I've paid attention. Um, I was going to say that I noticed there's a transfer to a previous member of staff. Um, is that because of the debtor or something needs to be updated? No, because she didn't get paid the increase in salary that she was entitled to for the month of April when she was still working. So we all got backdated, didn't it, when we got an uplifting payment. So she came back to us and said, that month I worked for you, I didn't get paid the extra. Yeah, it's, it, it, once, you've let, once you've left, because the pay award starts on the 1st of April, we can't, we don't get it until the unions and the government decide the pay award. The pay award didn't, the didn't come out until November, which is then backdated to April. And if you're at a previous council, say from April, April okay. to May, you are entitled to have it. So that's what it was. That's interesting. That's 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 fine. I um, that's good. I've never been in a position before where I've had a pay rise backdated to previously when I resigned, but that is good to know. It may um, only be public. Absolutely. Public. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. I just yeah. saw it. Anyway, I thought it might be an out of date payment mm -hmm. or something, but I'm glad it's not. Um, I noticed there was a Christmas message in the journal. Was that advertising the switch on things? No, that was a, a message message from the council <laughs> wishing the residents of Midsummer Night a very Merry Christmas. I missed it. It's okay, I'll go back it was, and it was actually it. really badly printed. It was really oh, fuzzy. It was very, very pale, wasn't it? You couldn't read it. Oh. I'm sorry, I could read it. I could read it because I knew what it said, but I was a bit disappointed about <laughs> it. There was a nice letter from the mayor. Um, right, there was a job advert to the Devon Association of Local Councillors. So that, that was that because was. the they've got a better um, way of advertising, apparently. Right, so that was for the, in the summer for the recruitment. Well, it was the summer, it was a public programme, that's absolutely fine. And I noticed the decisions, £1,000, shouldn't have council decided if we wanted to start a yearly subscription no, for the new software. It's my delegation. Right, okay. <coughs> Any questions? So are we happy to sign the form? Yeah, well, happy now. After all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I know I signed this. Yeah, no, the bag report you had last night. And that one. Yes, it should have been two different forms, but I think. Apologies. We started signing. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm saying this. Sorry, it was confusing. No, don't apologize. It was. It was. I'm not worried. You're a minute earlier, wasn't it? Cut it fine. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Okay, so we're on to item six, approval of grants. Uh, one, 6.1 is Midsummer Norton and Rostock Dial Ride, and 6.2 is Somerset Farmers Markets. <coughs> um, I did, I sent a message in because I, to, to my understanding, we have overspent, we, we've spent more money than we allocated in the, in the grant budget, um, yeah. and we overspent it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so in that context, um, and also I questioned about whether we was, we've been paying these before, and I think we have been paying the Somerset Farmers Market, 1250 I think we it says. We had a three-year um, rolling agreement, didn't we? For the three year agreement, it was yeah. a three-year agreement, yeah. £1,200 per year for three years. I don't know when that finishes or finished. It's finished, it's not in the budget. Nobody nobody suggested to put it in the budget, so it's not in the budget. I think it has finished, yes. Well, was it was it in last year's budget? No, because otherwise you'd have seen that. No, because I've seen yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. It was it was it was brought up at a a council meeting. I'm trying to think if it was before or after I joined the council, but it was certainly brought up um, at the beginning of earlier in the year. Um, because it came up at the same time as there was a discussion about two grants that had been awarded on a three-year basis. One was to the radio station for £3,000 a year, and a second one had been granted to the radio station that overlapped, so they yeah. got £6,000, yeah. but they should have only got £3,000. And it also came up at the same time that there was also a three-year agreement for the farmers' markets for 1200 per year for three years. So I don't <laughs> know when that last payment, whether it happens, well, and they want to increase in notice, so maybe with that would suggest that the agreement is. My understanding is that it was it was paid this year. I'm oh, sorry, last year. Yeah. Earlier last year. It must be itemised in the budget. The I hope you couldn't find year. a copy of your budget last year, um, and I'm going to have to admit yeah. something. I only discovered it a couple of weeks ago. When I was doing your budget. Your budget on your realtors is actually your budget from two years ago because nobody put in the budget from last year into Realtors. <laughs> so the budget on our, your accounting system is from two years, yes, just say from two years ago, it's too late now to go in and change it. And then I would, couldn't find a copy of your approved budget from last year. And it's too late to change it now, now anyway. I have put in next year's, so when we do the year end in April, you will have the collection. Mm. So, so and, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think six I'm not surprised, <laughs> but at least you found it and you sorted it, which is which is good. Um, so the uh, and six point one is, I think, maybe is a similar situation where we've been we've been given some money, in the past maybe, and then so, so the dial a ride. We have think we've previously had, been given money, yes, <coughs> but but not necessarily as a. Each year. No, 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 they just have well, the previously. The farm market sounds like an arrangement we've had. Well, Maybe. So, it, 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 so, yeah. Taking them one at a time, I think. So, the dial rides, I know, and I know I'm the first person to say that we're over budget and we um, we can't afford any more grants. I think a dial rides, I mean, they do an amazing job. Yeah. And the current situation where the bus subsidies have been stopped by Baines, bus service has been cut by Wecker. I think there's more demand on dialer rides yes. than there's ever been before, which puts us in a tricky situation because we're almost subsidising Baines and Wecker for not doing their jobs. But, um, but there's so much pressure on dialer ride and our elderly trying to find transport with these cuts from Wecker and Baines. I don't know if we've got much choice but to support them. And I, I think we have to support dialer ride, I think they, for what they do for our yes. residents. Um, we have to find a way to say. Okay. I do think, um, yeah, things like dial ride, we should support. I, I know we're taking one at a time, but things like the farmer's market, but we almost, in a way, have to come up with a sort of agreement. Because their financial pressures will be the same next year. It's not like a one-off startup cost or whatever. They've said just general running costs, which isn't that dissimilar to the market, I suppose. It's almost like we have to then if we're going to support these things most years, we're almost going to have to decide to, to budget accordingly for that mm. because they're going to be 
continuing grants, unlike, for instance, the Scouts come to us with a one-off. Yeah, all we need to, need to know for these organisations is they still exist and they're still yeah. doing the work, don't we? Rather than to apply. I, so I mean, I've got the accounts and I only look really quickly for Dyla, I'd look really healthy. And I don't dispute they're doing an amazing mm. job and I don't dispute mm. more mm. people would need them and I'm more than happy to put a thousand pounds towards them, but if we haven't got the money, mm. that's but more of an issue, isn't it? Their costs are, are huge and yeah. growing. I, I, yeah, that's I, the trouble. I get that. And I think, yes. I think with. It's different to a lot of charities because they've got a lot of burden on them in terms of operating costs and maintenance costs and stuff like that. So they have to maintain a good level of reserve and, and funding because it's it's a difficult area to, to fund. Well, I know, but I get all of that. But yeah. I thought, thou, is it a thousand pounds that I thought was not really much towards the huge operation that they're running? Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't think it would break their bank. Although I'm sure every penny counts and would probably put on another 500 lifts or something. But the point is, it shouldn't be for us to support. It should be WECA and it should be Bates because they're pulling the bus services. So do we not support it and say we haven't got the funds and be honest and write an article and say, actually, here we are put supporting this amazing charity. We can't afford to anymore conveyance to it. I don't know. That's a very good point. But the argument that's going on at the moment, I mean, there's a ridiculous political football now between Baines and Wecca, and pretty much almost Lib Dems and Labour. It's a, it's, and it's, and it's, it's all become very toxic. Um, Baines are complaining that they, that Wecca have got 52 million pounds that they're not releasing for bus services. Wecca are complaining that Baines have cut all their subsidies since the election. So our rural services aren't, and in the means, in the middle of that, there's our residents desperately trying to, you know, particularly the Albi residents, just trying to find a way to get down to the high street to get to pick up a, a prescription or, you know, mm. or just get out of the house. Yeah. So I, I understand what you're saying. No, I just, no, I'm happy to. Spot I do, it, I do as well. Right? I think for ages I've been trying to argue that, that, that town councils shouldn't be picking up the tab for local authorities, but. With, the problem is, if we don't, the tab isn't okay, picked up. Yeah. So what you might argue with someone like Dial Ride is, is quite a big organisation, but this, that their operation in Midsummer is not that big. So we're helping subsidise the Midsummer Norton bit. And it'd be the same, again, putting the two together, the same with the Somerset Farmers Market. It's a relatively big organisation of seven different markets, but this little bit helps contribute to our little bit of it. So maybe it's just one of the things as a town council we go, I think the numbers, the, the numbers for Midsummer Norton were quite, quite large on their um, application yeah. form. Yeah. Is there not something as well, and I'm, not, I'm only sort of trying to understand the process here, why we would find the money, which is fine, to support these entities, but if we haven't got money in the grant spot, when the next people come in, if we don't value them as much, do we just say you can't then? I, don't, I wonder where the equality is in that. And I just, uh, I'm just putting it out there, is there an equality policy that says we can do this? Well, could we, we go, can't? could we go with 500 to each of them? That would oh. be putting our mm. grant at £1,000 well, as opposed to two and a half. What I would say is, well, I mean, I don't know if the peers would be happy out. about being lumped together just, just for sort of convenience. Um, I did make a question as well, that our new grant policy has two application windows. Yeah. Um, but I don't see why that's necessarily got to tie up with when payments are due. Because obviously, you, what if people you do want to make it year it comes out. It depends on budget the year it comes out. Of. Right, exactly. So, so if, you, if you delayed these in July, it would come out of your July budget, so your budget of 20000 for grant would then immediately be reduced to 17500 and a half. Okay. And then well, can I just say that, that any grant application is going to reduce our grant budget? I think we should all agree that. Yeah, so we're if, straight off, we'd only have 17 and a half. Yes, because we've already. allocated some of the grants. Any grant application will reduce the budget. That's a bit like when you start to spend your pocket money, it but tends to go down. Thing. What I would say is, we've got this new system of two windows. We don't necessarily know when the farmer's market... It's not like I think they urgently need money. It's more like an ongoing maintenance to try and support our one um, sort of functioning uh, sort of commercial market in town. So, I wouldn't imagine there's any reason why payment for that wouldn't be able to come through next year's funds. Is there any? When, when we're having the first round of 
we, we, did you, well, January and June. Yeah, well, so we July finished? and January. Yeah. July, so we, we're not having one this January. Oh, well, we this is your... We're not having a... Because it's it coming to Florida until the next financial year, does it? Right, so and I suppose if you were to if you were to do that, then yeah, that's fine. But your finance and ops committee coming forward might not be the same people that are sitting around here. Mm. And they would have the same... May, they may have the same beef that you had when you found out that half of your grants policy had already been spent by the time you came into the committee. That's just something to bear in mind. Because it's a different financial year. Right, okay. So, so for clar clarification sake then, if this uh, committee were to resolve to say award the grant to Farms Market, which then became payable in July, what's, there's nothing stopping that. There's no financial right, but then, but then in, in July, when I come to when I come to your July meeting, I would say you owe de, you owe the fifteen hundred pounds down on your budget for grants. Fifteen hundred pounds down. Because right. you got allocated in your last financial year, we couldn't which really. is a bit unfair to grants coming in. Yeah. Anyway, well, if that's okay, then um, I'm happy to propose the first grant. Is there a seconder for that? Thank you. Anybody in favour? Not paid now. Yeah. No, yeah. they we resolve to accept the grant now and it'll become payable in the next financial year. Oh, no, no, well, no, I, no, that, no I wouldn't agree no. for that. No, that's what's caused the problems in the first yeah. place. Mm. It's carrying over the problems. So, where's the from this, this year's account? It would have to be in this financial yeah. year. The yeah. new budget yeah. is set for the new financial yeah. year and we yeah. start the new budget on zero. Fair enough. Yeah. I think. Oh, that's fine then. That's I think I mean, one of the problems we've got is that the current grant budget was, was £4,000 over on day one. Yeah. Because it carried over from the previous year, and I think we'll just we'll keep ourselves in that cycle of winning. <coughs> okay. Yeah, great. no, we agree the same. We we are we're, we're agreed to award it, and we award it now. Okay. From this financial year, or we say you come back in yeah. July. Well, I thought what would happen in, yeah. in, in clerking terms is yeah. the um, money instantly gets debited from an account, even though it's not being paid. Yet. That's, yeah. I so agree. it becomes it becomes marked anyway. Can I just ask before we, we do it, we, in the last meeting, or maybe not last one before, we've, we've allocated money when we've been over budget before, but we've found the money somewhere, haven't we? Well, it comes out, it will come out of your general reserves. Right. Or unspent other budget. Yeah, so or, we can. Right, okay. So does some, anybody... Do we have an agreement now? Oh, do we, do for we this year's, to, for this... Do we have to spend, give it all? I mean, in the past, <coughs> we've reduced amounts of money that we've given for grants. Well, I proposed it. Sean seconded it. I think I, I, I think when we're talking about a marginal amount like that, yeah. And I mean, I think I think Dara and I are, are reliant on a lot of donors providing a little bit of support rather than having one big source of income. So if you go to all the parishes that you support and they all give a thousand pounds each, suddenly you've got enough to run. A, yeah. I mean, look at this. I mean, they they've made seventeen thousand journeys to and from Midsum and Norton in the last year. And it seems that the vast majority of those are people, are well, out people trying to get to doctors and dentists and things like that. So it's quite good value for a thousand pounds. I think I so. I think it's her. a great course. I just think it puts into complete disarray everything that well, we see. I think, <laughs> I think, <laughs> things, things like that. It, but <laughs> we are where we are in this financial year, which we've inherited, but next year we have, but, next year we have a new budget and we also have a grants policy. And the combination of those two things Give us more control over what happens from the new in the new financial year. I understand all of that, but we are going against everything that we've said we put in place. Well, I know I think they're a great thing, but I don't think we'd be saying this if this was a football kit or something no, else. No, wouldn't. No, but no, what wouldn't. I'm saying is, it's not for us to judge. What is a good cause? Well, of course it is. That's the that's yeah. the problem. Well, okay, but it's <laughs> not. It does. It's not very equitable to those who are putting into the grant system because we're not upholding the grant system. So I'm just saying Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's exactly why, we, that's, that's 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 exactly why we've brought in a new grant system. But and we're not we've, adhering to it. Well, it's a quite funny one, isn't it? Because uh, we've kind of brought in a new grant shed it hasn't come in, but it's mid-financial years. So no, 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 can you agree that you're paying now? Yeah. yeah. But the policy is for the next financial the, year. Oh, right. The grant policy we've agreed is for the next financial year. And it falls in line so with the new budget. Worse, to, so, so we're going to act right. We you said you don't want us to act up until the next financial year. I mean, the, 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 the thing okay, is yeah, that we, so. we we have 
we have to make a judgment call. That's we have to make dis- difficult decisions. But they're not and financial. It, and I would yes, I mean, and buying a football kit wouldn't necessarily be a, a priority. But elderly people getting to a doctor's dentist, I would say, is yeah. But if you looked at the accounts, they're really healthy. Those accounts for a thousand pounds isn't going to make them go out of. But being I think you've got to understand the the structure of the, of the type of charity they are and the the risks in. In any type of transport um, charity, it doesn't mention any risks there. When I read it, it looked like a really healthy set of accounts. But it's fine. I think it's a great charity. So I'm just saying. I don't. I thought we were all saying we had no grants when we left. We, we haven't. Just, so you're right. We're not we haven't got any money left. We're not. Market, we're, not <laughs> we're not. We're um, not. The, the council. Just stop using the word we, shouldn't we? Uh, the council uh, may have overspent its grant budget, but it is a long way from running out of money. This is why we have six you, to nine months of reserves at any one time. You will be over budget at the end. Well, you over budget now. Yeah, uh, sorry. But, but you you have a you have a health in general reserve. Yes, exactly. So I said that's what reserves are for, and and, and small figures like that are, are, are small. So well, that's it. Well, we are doing it for yeah. the next year. So, so, so we've got, got a new grant then. system, yeah. we've got a new grant window, which is why it's January, but because it's kind of fallen lopsidedly in the financial years, that's why we've got a little bit of a mishmash of, that's it, so it's fair enough. Okay, I'm with you now, I don't yeah. fully get it. All right, so we've had the discussion on here, but I'd have to say we've had I've proposed the proposal on second, the second we're on to the vote now. So we, we're all in favour of, or who's in favour of? I'm in favour of it. I'm just going to go. Yeah. yeah. Is it well, sure? but it's been it's been it's been proposed and seconded. Yeah. Um, so that's two votes. Is yes. that both of them? No, no it's just one. It's called Dialogue at the moment. Dialogue. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I'm up for that. Three, four, I feel that I just feel I totally see what you're saying. I feel sometimes though it's kind of important that town council put a bit of a token. It's a little bit of a token gesture into to acknowledge the fact that yes. it includes been so no, nice. Yeah. Sort of make sure take, everyone gets a token gesture. No, you're right. I think. That's, that's, yeah. Well, that was the, was that the kind of the Westfield approach? Maybe we should put some lots more. So, smaller when, so, when, so when your grants come in in July, you know, you could have one for three, you could have four, one for four, you could be five. Then you say, no, I'm not giving you five, I'm giving you two. Yes. Yeah. That's when you spread yeah. it a bit more. And you can really see what you're looking at as opposed to all the strips and drops. Like if you've just got the whole load in front of you, I think it'd be easier to make decisions. That's why, yes. Yeah. That's that why. You probably need to go out in the newsletter and the press release this new policy because it's going to catch up to people. Mm. Well, Rat Stop here probably says their grant for John the other That's in the, you put that I think online, mm. in Facebook or something. There's no rounds of. Do be aware of the deluge of applications as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, then it's up to you to say. Yeah. Yes, and then they can apply yes, again later in the year, I think. So, shall we move on to the, just, uh, move on to the uh, Somerset Farmers mm-hmm. Market for £1,000? No, £1,500, sorry. Mm-hmm. And, and I've just found, so, so we weren't aware of this agreement that had been made in 21, um, but it was that members resolved to award the revenue grant application for financial years 22 24 to the farmers market for 1,200 for three years. Mm. We didn't know about that. It's only since you've been talking that I, I found it. Yeah. So, so, so including 24? Yeah. So they're asking for 50, but we agree 1,200. So what, what this application is, is they're actually asking, uh, they're not actually applying for a new grant, they're applying for an increase of the 1,200 to 1,500. Yeah. That's what their application's for, isn't it? All right, so they're just asking for an additional yeah, 200 yeah, pounds for this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but we because we didn't know about that, right. it's not in the budget, and it right. wasn't in the previous year's budget, budget so okay. we didn't have any any sign gotcha. that this was an agreement. Right. It's only okay. since you mentioned it that I felt I've been able to find mm. it. Okay. It was paid after last year's money, and we'll learn. They well, were paid with last year. I don't know if they were paid or if it was they were only paid in 22. Right. I don't mm. know. I'll spoke to well, I'll stop. I'll like it. I'll speak in, I'll speak in favour of their proposal that. Um, it was really disappointing to hear other farmers markets have actually closed and the town councils have taken um, criticism for not having supported the markets and they've gone uh, and so for me the town council decided to have a bit of a presence there a year and a half ago um, because we're a market town and we have one market and we seem to be spending an awful lot of money trying to build new markets and the first thing you want to do is not lose the market you've got so um, 
I think, uh, out to £1,500, which I believe largely goes towards providing entertainment in the market. Um, uh, I think, personally, I think it's essential that the Town Council continues to support them. Anybody else? I'm not sure if I'm, com I'm, I'm comfortable with the 1,200 that's already agreed, well, but we have to, we've, we've already agreed, it's already been committed, the 1,200, mm -hmm. so we have to pay that, that's already been put through. Um, I don't know about this, the increase of 300, um, because I'm not sure that I'm convinced, I, I, it's a very valid thing in the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, first, can I ask a question? I mean, first of all, on top of the money that we pay, do we pay them a fee each month for our store? We don't. So we so we get given that store for free, included in the. I mean, you could argue that this is rent rather than grant money um, for our pitch, whichever way you wanted, whichever way it worked out yeah. in terms of how you would um, finance it. Um, the other concern I have, which doesn't necessarily affect what we're doing today, but. My understanding is that they're not interested in moving the market to the market square when it's ready, mm -hmm. which concerns me because mm -hmm. I think you're going to find, first of all, you're going to find Heritage England are going to say, well, we just gave you a million pounds to create a market square, and all we've done is effectively um, tidy up the car park. Mm -hmm. So unless we have a market on that market square, I think and Baines and Wecker, everyone that contributed towards making that market square a market square. Mm. Um, so that concerns me that they're not committing to um, utilising. I mean, are we going to end up with two markets competing with each other? Well, it's interesting. I mean, the, co the conversation I've had from them, um, they, yeah, concurrently, they, they, don't, they don't seem minded, they don't seem enthusiastic, certainly, about moving, um, but they are in quite a nice spot already. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if there were to be a market at the um, or markets at the island, it'd be really important not to have open competition, because in small closed spaces like that, as much as we approve of competition, it actually harms traders. So, I mean, it's not like we'd have an alternative farmers market at the island. I don't think. Well, I, I think, I, as I say, I think it would be quite good if they were minded to move closer to the island. Well, at the moment, we, I, mean, on, I, think, I believe that on the same day as we have a farmer's market, there's a craft fair in the Soma Centre mm. that nobody knows about. And the Methodist church is craft everywhere. Right. Well, we could have, have another market a different day, so it wouldn't but crash, this doesn't, would it? It just, it, I think the whole point of all these millions of pounds on an indoor-outdoor mm. market space, so we can have this amazing yeah, market and disagree. compete with places like Wells and, and stuff like that, and and all these other markets. Yeah. But the market isn't prepared to move there. Um, no, but I mean that in the end, that's up to them, isn't it? Really, mm. they, well, it's they, up to them. But yeah, yeah, so then we can speak. Well, well, it's bank it's bank bank bank. Bank. banks aren't going to be too happy to find that the market hasn't moved after they spent all that money on the market square. Well, well they won't be getting the rent from the the market. They will get from the stores because um, banks get the rent from the stores. But uh, be, you know, for using the the, the hollies. I hope not pay so. much. Or no, it won't be as good much. I mean, we could influence their decision by saying we will give you the money if you move to the government. Well, I think it's <laughs> can be some. But my, my understanding, again, from you know talking within the uh, cultural consortium and the heritage, my pictures over there, and the um, and, and the, the trust is that if they stay staying there, and that seems to be what they're saying. But the, the market's extent, so the, the crafters market moves into the town hall. There's more of a heritage, or you know, different. It's, there's other stores that complement what goes on there, so it's a different kinds of. But so, and so and people could, it becomes more of an event rather than a smaller, isolated market. I understand what you're saying. What were two different management structures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you have got two competing markets then. Oh, it depends. You, very different you could have one yeah. 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 different things. Yeah, it wouldn't be two produce markets. It would be a whole market day with a midsummer and autumn at the first Sunday. Yeah. Because remember, the, the, produce, the, the farmers market, market is quite strict, isn't it? So it's produce, it's locally produced produce, and they generally try really hard to avoid traders in the market to compete. Um, so some of, I've heard those are some of the pitfalls that things like fruit independence fall into, where you have lots of competing traders, and traders are now going. Not making as much money well, as I want to. So, well, so that's that's the way their market. But you're going to have markets there that are, you're not allowed to have any food markets there in case they, they 
conflict with the, mar with the farmer's market up here, which is under a different mm -hmm. control and management structure. This is fraught with problems. Sure? I think so. I think, I think the whole point of this millions of pounds was that we have a, we reinstate the farmer's market. We have an indoor and outdoor market space, mm. um, which would be the best in the county or best in the area. Um, I don't know, this just, it, it concerns it's, me. I mean, from the, I mean they, we, we could talk to them, but we can ask them to come along and, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a the thoroughfare, you know, from this, this, the car park, the, you know, for, in terms of them, you know, the green area, there's the, the shops around, there's the come people going down from Sainsbury's or Costa or the car park, they get <coughs> passing the train, um, you know, they're visible from the, you know, the cars and things passing, you know, people cross the road and use it, so I can see reasons why they would want to. It's, and, and, you know, you started by saying it's, you know, it's not directly relevant. Now, we don't know when the market area is going to be, the island is going to be ready to mm -hmm. be used. Work's not starting for yeah. some time. So it, it, it might it, not be the next, it's, uh, you know, well, kind of the year. Yeah, it's starting soon. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be completely this year. I think it's going to be finished. Yeah. finished yeah. by Christmas. Yeah. Oh, right. piece. I mean, did you, watch the, did you watch the viral Facebook clip of how great the market is? So I interviewed all the traders and they all said they loved the location. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying, Sean. I mean, also, it's quite small. So I think they're, they're at capacity, aren't they? Is it 17 stalls at the Holly's Garden? I think the new market configuration uh, the island's about 17 stalls on a good day. Mm. So I think there is um, scope for having two markets on the same day if you want to properly move the market town. So why did it go under one management umbrella? Maybe. I mean, certainly I think, um, as I said right at the beginning, I'm keen to support that farmer's market because I think it's very good for the high street. And certainly, you know what, we need to be having these discussions going into 2025 to work out exactly yeah. what we want to be supporting, don't we? So we've got, we've got two councils who, who are minded to support, mm. but one who um, would involve well, support I'll, I'll in the amount that... Um, sorry, I'll, can I just make a proposal? Well, sorry, second. can I interrupt for a moment? Cause, because I was been looking up payments, because they had this three-year deal. The farmer's market had 3,000 in April, All right. which is the beginning of this financial. 3,000. So, yeah, yeah, they had three farmers market revenue grant payments for a £3,000 actually went out in March. Do you think that was because they hadn't had the previous years? Is that another one? Is that, is that an overlap to say where's the. I know because it's 1,200 well. Sorry. Yeah, so mm. they had 3,000. They had 3, Sorry, go on. So, well, we, 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 I mean, maybe we had that issue with the, with the radio station where the two three year overlaps. Is there some. I mean. I think, I think this is. I think they've had the three years. This is a new one, but it just happens to fall in the same financial year as their last payment. So, well, so they're asking. Can, can I suggest that we go and get some clarification before we make a decision on this one? Mm. Exactly what they have had, what they haven't had. What is the current agreement and how long it'll last for? I think we need some clarity on this before we can. Because if we sign up another extension here and they've already had 3,000 this year and they've got another 1,200 due. Yeah. And it goes up to fifteen hundred. Right. I think that's fair enough. Thank you. Because yeah. we, we didn't we didn't realise that this was an ongoing kind of. We, yeah. No, I think that's we, a good idea. You've only been here a few months, isn't it? No, but exactly. So thank you for the. Um, if that's so, agreed. Will that mean then you you go back to them and see? Um, well, we'll to, go through to our to accounts and have a proper look and, and go through all the minutes and find out what's been agreed previously, what's been paid, and so that we can reconcile all of that to make sure that what we're presenting to you is accurate. Because because we didn't realise there was any history to it. Right. Um, and I was going to say, are you going to go back to the farmer's market and say to, to resubmit or it will be considered in February's meetings? We can defer it. We can go back to the next month. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we'll go back to them and tell them that that's the... We'll yeah. ask for clarification about what the, the new payment is for. Is it towards their previous agreement or is it a new agreement? Mm. What the <coughs> <they're going to coughs> Yeah. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> so, um, so it says, they do say that please note that the grant covers two financial years. Yeah, let's defer it and we'll go back and make sure that yeah. everything we've paid in the last few years is up to speed with what we did. We have previously agreed as a council. Mm. Yeah. Sounds sensible. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, that's service uh, point two. So we we'll move on to item seven, still monies. Um, so is this for information or is it so is a proposal? This, 
this is not a proposal, this was from directly from Gordon about cell monies. So Yeah, yeah it's all a bit a little bit garbled, isn't it? I mean, the first thing it all came from an email I say. So the first thing is clarification, because I did some research on what it all actually came from the fact I did the training on the um, on, on, on the uh, on the planet. And uh, there's lots of great case studies how other town councils had cleverly used their sill money towards projects for the town. Great projects, connecting communities, I don't know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, armed with this knowledge and realising we had sill money sitting in EMR and, um, you know, always had an ambition, it's the reason I got on the council, to, to, to make mm -hmm. with these lanes somewhat more passable thought that's the sort of thing Sylvie yeah. wants. So all I did was I sent an email to the staff asking if that was the sort of project that Sil could be used for. And one way or another it somehow ended up on an agenda. And then I was answering a lot of interesting emails today from people I think I, I think about SUSTRANS and other things, which I did not expect, but never mind. And um, so that's how it got there. Um, but it's a suggestion, so you know, um, that 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 lane Lots of people have asked for that lane to be addressed. It should have been addressed in my housing estate was built. Bain said so. It's never been touched since. So. Feasibility study is the first stage. I think the, I think the problem we may find, well, I think, first of all, I think the problem you might find is that still, using still for a feasibility study is different to using it for the build of a project. Mm. Um, but we can get some clarification from, on that. Um, I think the big issue is that cycleways are the responsibility of Wecker and Baines. They tend to be hugely expensive to build and maintain. And that's why councils don't take them on because the cost involved in either building or operating a cycleway yeah. is way outside the, the budget. I mean, we're, 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 I mean, we're already pretty much overstretched on our yeah. green space commitments as a council. But I think, and I know what, you know, the, the amount of cost and maintenance of Baines incur just on the existing um, cycleways, um, the liabilities and the, the, the um, maintenance is quite big. Mm. Um, I think the, I think in that in your particular instance, I think the best thing would be to be lobbying um, Baines or Wecker as yeah. part. Of, Wecker are already looking at these in, uh, thing in the cycleway between Farringdon Gurney and Midsummer Norton. Mm. Um, so Wecker would be the obvious routes to push for. But you'd, the trouble with Wecker, you'd need to demonstrate, like Frank McGurney has demonstrated, that it's not just an extension of the cycleway, it will, be, it will add to a commuting route. Mm -hmm. And it's that, it's that dual purpose, make sure it's not just a leisure. Well, that's where this obviously is so good because it connects to sort of four or five schools and a rugby club and a cricket club, so it's actually a heavily trodden path in the summer. I think the cycle lane bit is probably a bit of a. a, a, a um, overstating it. It's a bit like when I was kind of going about the Midsummer Orbital. Mm. A bit too big. Yeah. And here we're talking about maybe sort of 300 metres. But who who owns it? It's a bridleway. So 300 metres of badly maintained bridleway but connecting um, housing estates mm. and town trust lands. But, but so yeah, who's, who's, whose ownership is that? It's, um, it's most, well, what does bridleway mean? I thought bridleway mean. Meant it's got ownership. Right away, it's like a right horses, can go on horses can go on it. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, was, it I think but, but it doesn't mean. I mean, by the way, it could mean that the, there's a public right of way, or it could yeah. be it's, it's in public ownership. It's, it could be according to the planning application from 2010. It was mostly known ownership, apart from one little bit that was indeterminate, and they didn't follow it up. And that's why the housing builder, David Wilson, weren't um, obliged to, to make good that path mm -hmm. and it was just left with paved routes onto the bridleway that just end up in mud and everyone said what happened and, and they never did it but then it, it said in planning it was, it was going to be a future, a future project which never happened or it was going to be looked at in the future. So I mean they said it was surprising because um, because most of it's a bridleway it should be known ownership. And obviously people use that lane to get to um, the town trust land, the community orchard and the <coughs> with these lane town park. And yeah, and the Silver Street nature so connect. So um, so yeah. You do get the odd car and horse going up and down. And you know. So I guess that's the, the car. Yeah, yeah, well they go up to the, the, the orchard and the, the, the what are they call the allotments at the top. 
And this is where I do have a declaration of interest, actually, because now that my son's going up to secondary school, he keeps on cutting through there and getting covered in mud. This makes Mrs. Mackay, the mayoress, very upset. Well, I, think, so, I think the first stage for doing anything else would be to establish the ownership. That's, mm. Well, I that's, thought that's the sort of thing a study would do, that that's really good. No. Cool. Stage one, no? Well, it depends. It can do. If it doesn't necessarily do it. I mean, you know, same as planning. You know, planning doesn't necessarily concern itself with ownership. It concerns itself with what is the design and the project. Mm. Um, I could apply for planning to build something on your garden and get planning permission approved, but I can't do it because I don't own the the, the garden. Exactly. And it's the same. Plan shot on the <laughs> yeah. So that's. So I think. I think there's lots of things we could do as a town council that wouldn't cost anything to to establish things like ownership. Right. But I think after that, I think we'd really need to be talking to Weka. Um, Maybe, I mean, you see, we do own. We, I mean, do. we have, we have, we have Weka money at the moment for a feasibility study, but that's for the high streets. Um, so there's a hundred thousand pounds for, from Weka to do a feasibility study on Midsummer High Street and understand what the high street needs. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that and that's ready to start now. And in fact the Baines office are ready to are ready to start that project now. Um, but that would only that wouldn't go out as far as something like that. Mm -hmm. um, well as I say, I was just going to the example of other town councils who have managed to use the planning system and sill money to provide these uh, corridors to allow residents to, to connect spaces and we have an obvious one. So um, it's the first time I really thought, because originally I thought, well, there's various ways you could fundraise for it, but sill money, and we have considerable amount of sill money with no allocation yet. A tiny amount of it's Jetix, but I don't know. I mean, is it feasibilitystudy.com? Is there a website? I wouldn't, well, I've, I've written in my notes. I know we've had various, I'll, I'll have to contact Baines and see what the sill money can be spent on before you commit to a feasibility study. Because it, sale money is, can be spent, is where you get it from developers, so when, so when to improve the housing, to, I can't get the words out, it's called. Mm. <laughs> so I don't think, but I will double check, a feasibility study would be, it's not on Bain's list. Typically you would expect that you turn up, having done your feasibility study, and say, this is what we want, and this is what the cost, and this is how much sale money we want to do it. So it'd be the so the, what you're doing is the prelude to an application for sale rather than the application for sale. Possibly, I mean, I think I think um, so, so, so you would be allowed. To, I think you would be allowed to spend so. sale. Sale's pretty broad as long as it's um, for the right reasons. They say the law changed in 2011 about allocations, and now it's just for the general improvement of the town. It can even be spent on running costs now, so we can use it to run a community bar or whatever. It's basically for improvement of the area, I mean, it's, and it's not to make up for developer contributions because that's S S106. That's all to inquire about. So, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I've suggested this, and um, it's been brought up by other residents. Um, Sarah mentioned it to me because other residents have come to her about it. So, is, is there any way this can be brought forward, or do I just? Draw the line to the town council and see. I think I think it's a worthwhile, uh, if only for the principle of understanding, because yeah. we've talked about doing feasibility studies on public toilets. We've done we've talked about feasibility studies on and consultancies on things like the neighbourhood plan and uh, the, the the five year strategy and stuff like that. Um, so it's an interesting idea to understand whether we can access sill money for consultations and feasibility studies. Then we could perhaps have a, a more meaningful conversation about which feasibility studies and consultations we want to do if we can access the money. Which ones would be priorities? Don't yeah. know. The first step is to, I guess, to establish the rules, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I've, as I say, I've, I've established the rules to a fair extent, shared them with the clerks, and asked the Baines SIL monitoring officer, did you know they have one? And got a favourable answer, which is totally in keeping with what I kind of said. So that should probably be double checked. But Baines won't give you a straight answer. Basically what happens is you spend still money, they ask you how you spent it, and you have to be able to prove that you haven't done something that you shouldn't have with it. It's a little bit, it's a little bit um, chicken egg, but I don't think that's a big problem. I mean, maybe the first step would be, so otherwise nothing's going to happen. Would the, would the first step be that the council could um, 
be instructed to ascertain what the ownership of that parcel of land mm -hmm. is connecting your two pieces of land? Or, or is this something that the council simply can't do and I'll continue doing it by myself? If you, if you can provide a, 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 a map, a relatively detailed map of the piece of land you're talking about, mm -hmm. then I may be able to do that through banks. It would, it would be on the land register. Mm. Not necessarily, no. No, because uh, no, you are, no, you're correct there. Because on the land register, and I always get the wrong date, they only hold digital records the last 12, 15 years, and there is a date. Mm. I'm not going to make it up because I don't most, know. Most unregistered lands is unregistered because nobody's ever registered it in no, but, but, decades, isn't it? But the landmark registry only yeah. hold about 12, 15 years online. They, yeah. may, they may have paper, <coughs> they may have paper copies, mm. and you have to write and pay and ask for the paper, paper, paper copy. Yeah. If it's not, if it's unregistered, um, you can adopt the land um, and um, adopt it, but it takes 10 years. Yeah, if you use it, that's what we're doing in the Garden of Friendship in the Town Park, that's unregistered land that has been developed and if it's after 10 years nobody's claimed it, then you mm -hmm. can have it, the Town Trust can apply for it. But the way these liens are quite well used, um, relatively by people accessing the allotments and various holdings, and obviously the Town Trust land at the far end of it. So, in terms of action then, it's, it's either Councillor Mackay looks into this further himself or the clerks are instructed on the town council to I suggest that we should we should we should find out who, who can do this sort of work, whether it's um as I say feasibility.com or or new leaf or any of these sometimes. So can, can you take it to one of the working parties? Not really because they can't resolve stuff. No, but they they for working parties would find out all the information, the working party would find out all the recommendation. They could find out who owns it, um, or if it's not owned or whoever. They could then find costs for feasibility studies. Um, they then, then would put a recommendation and a paper together to bring to full council for the decision, decision to be made. They could do it, but I could rephrase that as by saying, you just want me to do it. Well, that's, that's it should, it we, we can't keep outsourcing every single job in the council. We need to take our ownership of some of these things ourselves. Yeah, but in the feasibility study, as I say, I mean, there's some, some simple bits, but then there's a little bit of um, engineering involved, like any of these projects. I read examples of other towns that have done this, how they um, managed to get feasibility studies that had looked into uh, issues of access to join different plots of land, um, what the engineering problems were. They came up with fairly detailed instructions saying there's there's waterfalls and there's, there's gradients and they said right this will have to be done if it wants to be for instance suitable for two-wheelers or three-wheelers or four-wheelers and they come up with a study and I've read a few few of them and then you know that will be the sort of thing and they'll say roughly this is how much it would cost in this sort of today's terms and usually that goes on a plan and that's usually what your feasibility study does and usually yeah, engineering but consultants or whatever draw this up and then once it's on a plan of course then you can apply to WECA for funding because they'll go got a plan, it can be done. The problem is with WECA is they wouldn't generally fund that sort of thing. And even like the rural grant came up the other day saying we've got £40,000 for, for projects, you know. If you had a project ready to go, you'd apply for it. But of course, things like this, you've got to work out whether it's possible first. Mm. And that's where I can't provide that expertise myself. So no, but footfall and, and usage and stuff is data that you can provide. Mm. Because that's ultimately what determines whether SIL projects are are valid or not is what is the community, community benefit yeah. to it mm. and how that that's already it. written into the beans planning though. so if you go into the actual planning system um, a well used important pedestrian path and that's why we put special links from my development onto it no, to increase the, permeability okay but you could produce a, a, a report for this specific application to, to a footfall in usage and um, public benefits uh, I, I so ultimately, that's 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 what that's what the officers at Silk are going to be looking at is where's the benefit from this investment. Um, so it's back to me just doing it. That's fine. That's what I'm, 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 I'm happy to help you with with, with statutory mm -hmm. land ownership. Thank you. Well, we can start thinking. But yeah, cool. Okay. okay, so the town council can't really do anything yet, which is nice and proactive of us. But maybe <laughs> maybe in the future you might be able to knock it something. Yeah, Thank you. Try again. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. So. Finished with that, great. So, item number eight for notification, rising pension contributions and pay award. So, 
we've been noting that, haven't we? And um, then, uh, yeah, item nine, the date for next meeting, which will be Monday the 19th. 18th. 19th. 19th, yeah. And is that going to be at seven o'clock? Might change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if there's no planning meeting, it might be brought forward. Does yeah. anybody have any objections at meeting earlier? Or? No. I don't no. have objections. I would just say be very, very careful about chopping and changing your mind regularly because we don't, I regret we don't actually have a lot of public uh, coming and stuff, but to me it should be rare that you change the timing of doing things. So we should be, I think that would be like every every month for several months in a row we've made a chop and a change. So. This one could stay fixed at seven, it's just the one before it could vary. It might start at half past six. Mm. Yeah. Or, but maybe, maybe right, keep this one as a fix, seven till nine as a schedule, and then move the planning one to six, perhaps. Especially yeah. if it might, the odd planning one might be dropped as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we don't. No, no that's right. Councillors forget. Please, it sounds silly. I'm confused. I'm not allowed to send you a reminder. I'm sorry, I didn't know I didn't start. Meetings closed. I thought we were on the 